Bonaventure PhD is an independent art curator and biotechnologist. He is founder and artistic director of Savvy Contemporary Berlin and editor-in-chief of Savvy Journal for Critical Texts on Contemporary African Art. He is currently guest professor in curatorial, curatorial studies at the Städelschule Frankfurt. He was curator at large for Documenta 14 and is guest curator of the 2018 Dakar Biennale in Senegal. Recent curatorial projects include Every Time a Year, Di Soon, a Documenta 14 radio program, and Savvy Contemporary 2017, The Conundrum of Imagination, Leopold Museum Vienna, Wiener Festwochen, as well in 2017, An Age of Our Own Making in Holbeck, MCA Roskilde and Kunsthalle Charlottenburg, Copenhagen, 2016 to 17, Unlearning the Given, Exercises in Demodernity and Decoloniality, Savvy Contemporary 2016, and um, the Incantation of the Disquieting Muse, Savvy Contemporary 2016. Welcome you here to the conversation. So Bonaventure and I, we met before in preparation for the conversation and we came up uh, with a title which is kind of leading through the um, conversation and the question I have to Bonaventure. Um, the title we came up was Interrupting Colonialities of Curatorial Practices. Um, we heard a lot about um, colonialism, the end of colonialism, but the still ongoing coloniality. So you are a curator in the art world, working with exhibitions within museums and biennales. So my first question is, how are the realities of colonialities in the museum's presence? What is your view on that? Um, good morning and thanks for the invitation and I must say I'm really impressed uh, by the program and um, congratulations to Berlin Postcolonial and all of you for doing this amazing work. Um, also thanks for thinking of me <laughs> and I'm happy to be here on a Saturday morning. Um, <laughs> be before I get to your, to your question I wanted to, to touch on what uh, Nadia asked. Um, you know, the reflections on colonialism in Cameroon, and which I found a very important uh, thing. I'll, I'll come to the question in a bit. And you're right, it's true that uh, there is a kind of a, <clears throat> a hole um, in Cameroon with regards to uh, reflections on coloniality in general, um, for many reasons. Uh, but before going to the reasons, I'll start with uh, the fact that there are actually quite strong positions within the artistic scene. You know, uh, if you look at what uh, Marilyn uh, Duala Mangabel is doing, what uh, people like uh, Pascal Martin Tayu and so on and so forth, you know, Batulmi Togo in the artistic practices and the curatorial reflections are doing, there is something. If you look at uh, publications like the Abia from, the 19, from 1963 to, to the early 80s, you see the positions that were there. And all of a sudden, there is a cut. You know, also in publications like Africa Zamani, you know, these are fantastic, you know, political, cultural magazines that were founded in Cameroon and that uh, kind of uh, really excelled until the 80s. And what happens? It's very important to see a cut. And the, that point of the cut is when uh, the current president gets into power in the early 80s. And since then, he's been in power. You know, and you see that the country as it is, and we're going to talk about coloniality, you know, is an epitome of what coloniality is. You know, so the power mechanisms that were put up during the colonial times still exist until today. It is no longer Germany or France or England that is there in power, but it is a Cameroonian leader treating its own citizens as if they were under, you know, they, they were, as he actually dehumanizes them, you know. So uh, that explains a lot. Um, but that said, I think there are people, there are Cameroonians all over the place, 
be it in Germany or the US, brilliant writers, philosophers like Ashim Bembe, a couple of others that are doing some interesting work. In the country, there are also people, but the political situation is very difficult, especially now where the Anglophones are suffering from a, a terrible marginalization from a very brutal government, you know. Um, that said, I'll come to, 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 to your question. So coloniality in museums is basically omnipresent. You, you, you see it in, in various forms and, and, and discourses. Um, and it's very interesting to see the kind of amoebic uh, structure, you know, so it, it, it kind of uh, takes different forms. The most recent one I, I, I heard of was uh, something called the Global Museum. And which I think is a, a kind of an interesting idea until you look at it very critically. What is it they're actually talking about, you know? So there's a trend that's been going on for the past decades. You know, you kind of invite people uh, from other parts of the world and you say, uh, now you have your Africa exhibition. You know, and interestingly, I still get invited to do such shows. So what is the plan? You have a one-off exhibition and then they say, okay, we've uh, done that chapter. We don't need to bother about uh, Africa anymore. <laughs> so a uh, one-off thing, and then we'll think about Africa only after 10 years. But we are tired of that, you know. And that to me is the kind of, uh, the, again, the kind of structures of coloniality, you know. Um, so and then they, they basically just invite you, you do something. And what we ask for is that we don't want one of Africa shows. We want the programs in the museums to reflect the societies, you know? We are many of us in Berlin. You cannot erase us, you know? So if you have your museums and you do not include us, you make yourself redundant. So basically what we're asking for is not to put a one-off show, but make us part of it. We are part of it. So we are in the personnel, we make the program, and also the audience has to be reflective of the society, you know? So that's just uh, one way of looking at it. The other way is to come up with discourses like uh, shared heritage. Now, what does that mean? So, um, you know, uh, somebody would say, okay, we keep your, up, your, and actually I don't want to talk about this, this as objects because, you know, these uh, statues, they themselves are, are subjects. They have subjectivities. You know, they have agency as well, you know, so we cannot reduce them to objects, you know, because they've mentioned them a few times that they're just objects. But where I come from, these objects have meaning. They determine, you know, your day, your life, you know, so they have subjectivity. Um, so when discourses like shared heritage come up and you ask yourself, but what is this actually? Again, so this is again an exercising of the coloniality of power, as Anibal Kikano would call it, you know exercising your power over certain bodies, certain institutions, certain, you know, subjects, you know. And we, we, we see this all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you for uh, giving us some insight in your understanding. And now I would like to shift and also to the, back to the title and towards the question of interrupting. Um, how to interrupt these colonial, colonial curatorial practices within museums, which you had said, and also look at your work. What are you doing? In which ways uh, are you interrupting into these um, colonial processes or the reproduction? How to, or do you see, I mean, on one hand, the question is, what do you do? And what do you think are the effects? Is it possible to interrupt? Um, I think it's very possible to interrupt. Um, what 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 do we do? I won't talk just of myself because I'm one of many people at Savi, uh, Savi Contemporary. So I'll talk about a few projects at Savi. But before I get there, I wanted to talk about some of the things we tried to do uh, in Documenta 14. So to think of a, a long history of colonialism in its various forms. Um, to uh, reflect on the idea of, on, on, you know, when Nkwame Nkrumah wrote uh, that uh, new colonialism is the, it's like the last phase of imperialism. We wanted to look at that, you know, how does this neocolonialism manifest itself today 
in the nation state, but also in cultural activities, you know. So we, we, one of the things we tried to do was to look at uh, a long history of, of, uh, you know, of dispossession. So at, at the very beginning, Adam Chimchik uh, was his artistic director. He, he wanted to look at, at the Girlit collection, you know, this uh, collection that was, uh, you know, artworks that were taken from Jews, uh, you know, during the Holocaust, and the, the Girlit family basically kept, kept them, sold some of them, but also kept a lot of them. So to me, it was very important that coming into this curatorial team, I say that. Uh, good enough. We should look at the Goli, but we should also look at other things, you know? And that's why I invited somebody like Sami Baloji to look at um, mats, you know, artworks that were taken from the Congos in the 16th century by the Portuguese. And they, you'll find them all over the world in museums, in ethnographic museums all over the world. So we had to, we, we, we tried to, to get these, some of these objects from uh, from Berlin, from Dahlem, and of course we didn't get it, you know. So you mentioned Munich again. That is, it's only Munich that, uh, you know, uh, uh, lent us four of them, you know, four, four, uh, four of uh, uh, objects. So looking at the Benin bronzes as well, you know. So we wanted to look at a longer history of disposition. So it, in my practice, um, I try to to, to enlarge in these discourses and, and not keep them within, um, you know, the, you know, the small reflections of Europe sometimes. Um, one of the things we did at Savi in 2014 uh, was an exhibition to commemorate, uh, because uh, as later I mentioned, the, you know, the, the commemoration. We noticed in 2014 that. Um, you know, a lot of things have been commemorated, you know, how many years of the First World War, how many years of the Second World War, and so on. But the only thing that was lacking was a commemoration of the partitioning of the African continent, you know. So it was 130 years after the 1884 uh, uh, partitioning of the con uh, continent in Berlin. So we invited uh, a, 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 a curator, Simon Jami, to do an exhibition at Savi Contemporary and invited artists from all over the world to look at this, you know. And we did a conference at the ICI uh, looking at different, uh, you know, discourses within um, th this history. And it was, very, it was very important to see how this worked out because we did an exhibition with almost no funding. Because wherever we went to for, and applied for funding, uh, the, the, we got a, a response saying, uh, fantastic project, uh, but you know, either it's too long ago or we are, or we are uh, interested in the Holocaust. You know? And we always took our time to reply to them, to put it in context. You say, look, it's good you're interested in the Holocaust, but to understand the Holocaust, you also have to understand this part of German history. You know, because the mechanisms, they're not the same, but they're similar. There is a continuity in that. So we point out, you know, the, 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 the elimination, the Holocaust that happened in Namibia, you know, with the Hereros and the Nama. So we point that we took it very important and replied to all these institutions, you know. So uh, still we did the conference, and, in, and I just want to mention one of the, you know, one of the panels with the title, uh, A History of Owning Things That Are Not Mine. And for that, we invited people from the Humboldt Forum. <laughs> and uh, a representative came, and her first statement was, I am in charge of Africa. I am in charge of East Africa, West Africa, and so on and so forth. So even the violence in the language, he couldn't uh, 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 notice, you know. So uh, just as these are just a few things we're doing. But I want to point out a project we're doing at Savi as well called Colonial Neighbors, you know, which Savi was founded in 2009. In 2010, uh, I was in a meeting uh, with a, a, a politician from the cultural sector of Berlin, and he asked me, where do you, where do you, where do you come from? And uh, I said, from Cameroon. And he said, you know, in, in his, well, he said, oh, a French colony. 
And in my dismay, I responded to him, oh, a German colony. And his response to that was very interesting, you know? And I, I think it's very particular, because he said, oh, but you know, the Germans were there for just, just a very, very short time. <laughs> you know, and this is very typical, you hear that quite often. So I asked him, so how short was that time? Can you please tell me, you know? And of course he couldn't do that. So as a result of that, we put up a project called Colonial Neighbors. And in this project, we collect, we do calls, we collect objects in, you know, of the quotidian, small objects, photo albums, stamps, uh, diaries, whatever. And it's not because we want to fetishize these objects, you know, but because we think that through these objects we can narrate a history, you know. As Edouard Glissant said, you, we cannot leave history in the hands of historians only, you know. So uh, I, I, I like what uh, Mbo said, you know, hist calling on historians, but I think it's not to be left in the hands of historians alone. Historians are important, but they're not that important. Everybody has to narrate the story, you know. So that's what we started doing, calling for people to look into their attics in, 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 their, in their basements and, and, to, and to bring out these objects, you know. So what we do is we, we, we present some of them at Savvy, we invite artists to, to activate this kind of archive, you know. And it's very important to say that we also want the artists to be activated by the archives. So it's a two-way street, you know. So it's very important to see that the, in, this, in this whole thing, there is not we or they, we are all in it. You know, as, as James Baldwin used to say, racism is not his problem. It's a problem of the whites, you know. So it's, in this thing, we all have to be together. So the wounds are on, on all sides, you know. It's not only my wound, it's your wound too, you know. So let's look at it together. I would like to stick a moment to the Colonial Neighbors project. As you said, you call out to, to look at the attics and uh, give it to you, to the archive. Because just yesterday we were talking about that actually now it's as well another time that stuff out of the attics is coming up and it's not given away. Actually, it's being honored again, and which is uh, it's, it's a scary moment. So... Um, I'm, I'm just wondering a bit what is your experience and also to call out here that uh, please look at the attics and give, give it a way that other communities or like Savvy Contemporary give it a different meaning or put it in a, in a, um, context. In, in a context. Um, so I'm just a little bit curious uh, what is your experience to how these things get to you? Is it easy or are people, I don't know, what, what is your experience within the project? They come in various ways, you know. Some people come and they give them anonymously, <laughs> which we find very interesting, you know. I mean, we also write anonymous there. On the other hand, the people that come and they want to talk about these things, you know. And what we do is the, uh, so we work with, with three researchers in, in that team and we try to contextualize them in, in various ways talking to the people, you know, how did this come to you? Do you know anything about it? You know, sometimes we get to a dead end, but that's fine. You know, we do not, you know, claim to be omniscient. We don't want to be, you know. So uh, the other thing is, um, so people contributed in that way, but there are also people that send just uh, emails saying, I know of somebody who's doing this there and that there. And we, we, we tend, we don't want to buy objects. You know, first of all, we don't have the money to do that. Second of all, we want people to bring them, you know, and contribute them in, into the archive, you know. So again, uh, questioning the kind of power mechanisms that normally exist within archives, you know. And um, so these are, the, these are the various ways of, again, so it's, it's, it's actually quite difficult to get them, but we're also not claiming to have everything. You know, so whatever comes in, we're happy with it, and we take time to, to study them, you know, and to put them also in conversation with... with so whenever we do uh, an, an exhibition at Savvy, we also try to find a link to the various archives we have there. So th that, those are kind of strategies of, um, you know, of activating you know, what we collect. Yeah. 
Um, coming to my last question, and then there's also a chance to, uh, to take a question from the audience. Um, I want to go back to what you have said about um, that objects are not objects, that they are subjects. Um, to comment on that, and in particular because we're here also to talking about sacred objects and human remains. Um, so that is... Um, that entails a history of dehumanization. Um, so what, what is your comment on that, uh, in that regard? I think, uh, I think I see uh, Yona somewhere in there, which is something we've been talking about uh, a lot in the past years. Um, you know, Colonialism came with certain strategies, you know, strategies of, on the one hand, dehumanization, but others also strategies of, of, you know, breaking, you know, people, you know, physically and also, you, you know, mentally breaking their souls. I've been trying to think, or we've been trying to think of these strategies, you know, the way the, the colonizer dealt with people also in the way the colonizer dealt with their cultural, you know, with their arts, with the artifacts, with these subjects. So one of the things I've been thinking of, which is also something we presented at the documenter, was thinking about hunger. So the possibility of, of starvation. So you starve people to break them which is something you also do with their cultural, you know, subjects. You starve them. And now, why am I saying this? Because we've been trying to look, you know, uh, we, we all know the film uh, that was done, Resner did, um, Le, Le, Le Statue Mercy. Okay, fair enough. But I think that, the, actually, one has to look at, it is not just, the presentation of putting them in a glass that is the killing, it's the destruction, but it's also the starvation. So not having the possibility of the libation. So, because if we say that many of these cultural subjects were used for rituals, it means that they were fed, you know, and the feeding now is physically and also, you know, uh, you know, psychological, spiritual feeding. So if you keep them in a certain structure, you starve them from this spiritual feeding. So this is what we've been trying to think of. So it is, um, it is again, the process of denigration. So if we say that actually just 1% even ends up over, you know, in the museum itself, and the rest are in boxes, it means we, we are even we starve it even more, 99 percent. You know, so I would like to look at this and think about this even even more. You know, but so that is one thing. The other the other point I would like to think about is what a friend of mine, an artist, M. Carl, mentioned. He went to to um, a museum, I think, in Stuttgart, uh, an graphic museum, and he he saw a, a statue that comes from from where he comes from in Cameroon. And he's not allowed to see that. So to, to be able to see that, you have to be initiated. So what does it mean to be exposed to that? Now, we're dealing with a very high degree of epistemic violence here. So they, 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 uh, dealing with people that are not knowledgeable about what they are presenting. You know, so you expose this to, a, to somebody, and he comes in there and sees something he's not allowed to see. So what, is that, what does that mean to us? So I think there's a lot of work that still has to be done, you know, and we're just a small, you know, part of it, and there are many people thinking further about these things. Thank you. I think we have, like, some more minutes and take uh, one or two questions. It's very hard to see you here. Like, we're totally... I see one question here. Yeah. 
Uh, hello, thank you very much. Um, it was a very interesting presentation and uh, I see many similarities <laughs> um, with my own context. I'm Esther from Namibia. The last part that you mentioned there about the objects, it's very, very interesting to me. I think I should stand up. Uh, I'm thinking about the remains of the Herero and Nama people here in Berlin that the two governments are planning to sneak out of Berlin back to <laughs> Namibia. You mentioned something very interesting, the rituals. For the Germans, for many other people, it might be skulls. But for us, these are not only skulls. We look at those skulls and we try to imagine our ancestors. 2011, when we came, we did some few rituals before we even entered the charité. That's very important to us. That's a spiritual connection that we have with our ancestors. And I'm thinking when you mention this about the two governments, the Namibian and the German government, who are planning to take, to take back their skulls to Namibia without the involvement of the descendants. Doesn't matter whether it is third or fourth generation. So I really hope that this is something that the two governments will take serious and start realizing that spiritually they have a meaning to us. And I really want to appreciate what you said that. Before I sit, it's just a remark of what you mentioned also that it, you said German colony and it was said uh, German, it was only f a few years. We are hearing that every day in Namibia. The German ambassador in Namibia, Mr. Schlaka, I think I'm pronouncing the surname correctly, keep, keeps on telling us that please stop comparing your genocide with the Holocaust. Because we killed like six million Jewish, and the Herero and Nama were like few. You know, it, we are talking about human life. That is, do, they don't put any value to the black life. So even if it was one, it's about the intent, it's not about the number. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you very much. If, 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 if I may add something to that, I, I thank you for, for your remarks. And um, I want to, to add a, a, a kind of a bad feeling, you know, mention a bad feeling I have, you know, in my gut, which is um, the perversity of evil that, you know, we did more. And I, th I, I don't want to say, there, there is a very weird sense of, of course, acknowledging the fact that it was much, but a very weird sense of maybe some kind of pride in it. I don't want to say that too loud, but I fear that. As you rightly said, even if it was just one life, it matters to us. And adding to you to what you said, you know, the, the Caribbean poet Kamau Bradwit, he said, until we bring back these bodies. And I mean, he's also talking of the, you know, the body with the soul, until we bring them back in a proper way, until we make the rituals. Not only will they not rest, you will not rest as well. It's as simple as that. I would like to thank all the panelists of the first panel and I would close that panel 
And um, first of all, thank you, actually also to the audience being here. It's amazing. And thank you, Bonaventure, for the conversation. Thank you.